Okay, so um, what I want to um, showcase here is um, uh, a little bit of uh, virtual reality tools that uh, we have developed um, uh, for the field of um, material science. And um, we know that for very simple systems, uh, people have said that uh, uh, a 2D screen is enough. You see where the atoms are, you see the densities, and you understand. But once the systems get more and more complicated, um, uh, having a, a virtual world where you can walk around and see where actually the atoms are and all the what's going on, uh, it's an uh, advantage. So I'm going to start with an introduction to virtual reality because this is not just for material science. This is very successful in hundreds of different fields. So I'll show a little bit. Then we will see um, uh, what we specifically have done for NOMAD interactions with uh, the rest of the nomad and how you can use uh, your own data sets. Then uh, we'll go uh, see what the, the devices are because in virtual reality this is still uh, state of the art. So uh, each device comes with its own drivers and it's, uh, it's not like a monitor which is just plug and play. So this is more like a monitor where in the 60s where everything had to be much more lower level. So we'll see what sort of things are available. And uh, I want to highlight that these are, there are already installations where this is uh, being used by real people inside and outside of NOMAD. And then we will, um, after the coffee break, we will go and, and do some real examples. So the, um, the more complex your data set is, the, the more interesting it is to actually create a virtual world where you can uh, explore it in, in more detail because uh, that means that you can uh, free some um, uh, controllers and, and, and space to sort of um, um, do the interaction. Yeah? So normally with a mouse you would um, do the interaction, the rotation using the different um, uh, keys. Yeah? And in virtual reality you can if you want to rotate, you just need to walk around the, the object. If you want to zoom in, you just need to put your, your head into the object. So that means uh, you free your hands to actually interact with it and say, OK, I need the, the evolution to go forward, to go back. Do I want to highlight whatever. Yeah? And these are uh, a few examples of um, virtual reality that we, we've done uh, in the field of uh, geoscience, um, biology, um, art and uh, climate science uh, uh, engines. So this is something that is being done and uh, not much in chemistry, but in the other fields, is people are very happy with them. Yeah? And these are the example uh, installations that we have. So from really expensive, like um, room size, million euro installations down to phone base, uh, 200 euros. So depending on your budget, you can get something for you. Yeah? So in NOMAD itself, uh, we have um, crystal structures from the encyclopedia. So the very simple crystals uh, with two atoms, probably you see in the monitor, it's good enough. But once you get a very complex structure with hundreds of different atoms, it makes sense to actually uh, uh, go in there. And it's, um, it's the same. Like um, Many of you have built these uh, stick models in real space to actually be able to, to see where things are. and um, it's nice, but it takes time. And if it gets more and more complicated, uh, uh, it's, it gets heavy. Yeah? And in virtual reality, you can get that for free. And you just put on the helmet, and then you have the structure around you. Yeah? Then people have, um, um, were quite happy to see molecular dynamics. We'll see an example of a zetosine um, moving around in, the, in, in water. Uh, for Fermi surfaces, this is quite a simple Fermi surfaces in silver, but as you get more um, platinum and uh, more complicated uh, metals, your, your Fermi surface is going to, to get more and more complicated. So having it in front of you, like one meter um, uh, surface uh, floating in front of you, is, it's, it makes it easier for you to, to understand the shape. Then uh, electron density simulations are also quite important. So we also have, uh, it, this is the same example that um, uh, was talked about in the previous uh, presentation. And, and depending on what you want to do with it, different views 
give you more information on what you want to do. Yeah? And then uh, people have been very happy to, to use virtual reality for excitons because excitons are six dimensional data sets where you have uh, the, the three uh, uh, XYZ of the electron and the XYZ of the hole and this uh, to actually explore the, the, um, the data set you need like six dimensional uh, exploration and um, in virtual reality you have uh, real 3D so it decomposes into 3D plus 3D is quite useful. In a 2D monitor, sometimes it's a bit complicated to actually explore the data set. And uh, we have uh, people in here in Berlin who have been using this, and they're quite happy. And they will probably give a few words uh, about what they find uh, good about it. OK, so this is the hardware. Um, the ACC Vive is, is um, um, room based like three meters by three meters. It, it allows you to, to actually walk in the, in the virtual space and you have a few controllers to sort of uh, change the, the time step and change the, the things you, you want to explore. Yeah? But the, the, the simple interaction is taken care of by the virtual reality. So that frees your brain a little bit. Then we have uh, GRVR. That's uh, like um, uh, good quality glasses and sort of 200 euros, some sort of uh, cheap device for when you don't have a real tracking of uh, your movements, just the rotation. But if you don't have the budget for a vibe, it's good enough to have a, a quick look at the, of the system. Yeah? Then cardboard is the, the cheapest system, about five, seven euros, something like that. Um, lower quality glasses, but uh, yeah, if you don't have the if you only have a, a spare budget, then it's good enough to have a, a quick introduction to what virtual reality is. And then in, in Garkin, we have a, a cave, which is um, actually a, a room where all the, the screens are, all the walls and sailing and floor are, are screens. So you have a, a virtual world where you actually feel inside the world and you can walk in this uh, three meter space. So different technologies, different price points, depending on what you want to do. So we started by doing um, an, um, viewers for different uh, chemical systems to see um, um, how to do the interaction, what, what works better, what uh, so have the end users uh, uh, see um, what they need and try to implement something specific for these uh, uh, chemical systems so that they could actually use it in their, in their work and we could have um, a, a view of um, what was needed. Yeah? Then we, we tried the electron hole interactions in, in, in lithium fluoride, which is a system that has been studied for 30 years, so people could actually compare against the uh, things that were done before. And we sort of uh, created a, a specific uh, interaction paradigm for, for it. And then with all the, the lesson learned, we did a general uh, viewer which can get the, the data, like the um, thousands of uh, crystals from the encyclopedia or the millions of um, uh, chemical uh, systems that people are actually working on. Yeah? So that you can use it on your day, own data sets. So um, the three main... Um, Inputs for our system is uh, either um, a direct download from the Nomad Encyclopedia, that's the easiest. You choose your system and say, okay, I want to see this in virtual reality, and then it's already pre-configured through the uh, Nomad website. Then uh, many people are, are using extended XYZ files to, to do molecular dynamics. So if you have that, you just uh, need to tell the program, this is the, the molecular dynamics that I want to visualize. And then um, if you have electron density, in the future, uh, this electron density is volumetric, so it's uh, very expensive. In the future, probably the graphics card will be able to do that in, in real time, 100 times per second, which is needed for virtual reality. But currently, uh, this is a limitation of the, of the hardware. So we need to pre-process and simplify, which is the same system that video games are, are using to be able to actually show a, a big virtual world in, in real time. So there's a lot of uh, pre-processing that needs to be done. And we are 
um, choosing the, the basis of surfaces and help simplifying it so that it can be done, uh, can be visualized in, in virtual reality in real time. So um, we have a few places where this is um, being used in day to day. Uh, in, within NOMAD we have uh, here the physics department of the Humboldt University and they're ex exploring different exciton systems. And uh, in, in Garching, where I come from, I also have one, one node where we have the, the, um, the uh, room size um, uh, devices. And we're showing it around for the, the five un uh, the universities that are uh, nearby in Munich. There's uh, a lot of movement, and we offer it to the, to the universities. Then outside of, uh, outside of Nomad, we also have uh, um, four places. Uh, Shell India was quite um, um, happy with our systems, and they are using it um, in outreach and to, to show si um, chemical systems to, um, to CEOs. And, <laughs> and uh, they've been working with us for a few months. Um, then in, in Hamburg, we also have a, um, a student who is uh, using it for molecular dynamics. And he's also quite happy with uh, our system. And we are developing it uh, uh, with him. If he needs some functionality, we add it. And it's going forward. And then in, in the biology applications lab, also in Leibniz, but independent from NOMAD, um, we have a, an event every, every year. and. Uh, we are using the virtual reality tools to, to visualize their, their simulations. So originally, it was uh, more the supercomputing center and the simulations. But now we can also visualize them in virtual reality. And then we have some other uh, collaborations that are confidential for the moment. But we will in the future also show them. So uh, the preprocessing that we use for virtual reality uh, can be used uh, to create um, uh, 360 uh, degree movies to, to show different concepts. And we've done uh, a couple of uh, movies. This is a, a different movie from the one that we saw last time. Last time was like planar for a, a, um, for a cinema-like experience. This is 360 where you can put on your glasses, uh, look around you, and, it, and see everything around you. It's a, it's a, a different visualization of the same data. And depending on what you want to do, you choose the one that is best for it. And we also use the exciton data set to also show how the excitons uh, change the electron density. OK. So we've been um, also showing the virtual reality uh, routines um, in different events. So for the theoretical chemistry group in the technical university. Uh, the collaboration I mentioned before with uh, Shell. Then the, the big uh, WATOP conference was in Munich this year. So uh, we were showing that the, the virtual reality routines, and they were quite successful. The summer of simulation I also mentioned before. And then uh, in, in Christmas, uh, near Christmas, we will show um, in another event we have in, in Garchen the molecular modeling with a Schrodinger suite. So um, this is uh, the sort of things that I will show after the coffee break. We have the, the excitons. We have some molecular dynamics. We have some crystal structures. And I will show, um, so the, we only have one vibe, so that's for one person. And then we have a few um, Google Cardboard that we will show around. and. You can also see in the screen what the other people in, in person, virtual reality is doing. So I'm going to stop here and hear your questions. And after the coffee break, we can show this in, 